Pro-democracy activists appear in a Hong Kong court and say it was a piece of cake compared to dealing with a new security law. Compared to the threat of national security law or being extradited to China or kidnapped by national security agent, the price we pay right now is just a small piece of cake. We will continue our fight to overcome the fear and threat. Joshua Wong also appeared with fellow activist Agnes Chow. She pleaded guilty to participating in an unauthorized protest last month and inciting others to join in. Wong pleaded not guilty to similar charges. Both go on trial in November. Uh, today is the memorial of the dedication of St. Mary Major Basilica in Rome, and Pope Francis made a surprise visit. As the choir sang, flower petals were dropped from an opening in the ceiling, an annual tradition which celebrates the origins of the chapel. On August 5th, in the year 358, it actually snowed in Rome. It was interpreted as a sign from the Blessed Virgin Mary to build a church on that spot. Pope Francis brought flowers today and knelt in prayer before the image of Our Lady Solus Populi Romani. A funeral mass was celebrated today in Northern Ireland for John Hume, the Catholic politician who won a Nobel Peace Prize. Ireland's Prime Minister was among those to attend the funeral mass at St. Eugene's Cathedral in Derry, Northern Ireland. Hume died Monday at the age of 83. The Catholic leader of the moderate Social Democratic and Labour Party played a major role in Northern Ireland's landmark 1998 peace agreement. Joining us now is Bishop Donald McYoan, Bishop of Derry in Northern Ireland. Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure to be with you. So tell us, what was John Hume like as a person, and what did he mean to Northern Ireland? I think John Hume had retired from politics because of ill health about 20 years ago. So for a younger generation, John is more an historical figure. But I think his death, his illness and death over this past few days has really given us all an opportunity just to reflect on the giant that he was um, on, on a world platform as well as on the service he did to um, the local community. The Nobel Peace Prize, the Gandhi Peace Prize, the Mandela Peace Prize, the only one ever to have won all three, and one who was well known around the globe, and yet who never lost his sense of local belonging in this town and in this parish church here, this cathedral parish church. But he really was the architect of the peace process by analyzing the problem and proposing an appropriate solution. So looking back on him, John was one of the giants of this past 30 and 40 years, and one of the great peacemakers of the modern era. I know the Archdiocese received condolences from around the world regarding his life. Can you tell us who has been in contact? Well, we had a message this morning, obviously, from the Vatican Secretary of State because he was a papal knight. Um, he, we had a message from the Dalai Lama, message from the British Prime Minister, um, a message from Bono of U2, and obviously, the, the, a number of other local church leaders were very supportive. I had messages from a number of Anglican bishops, from the leadership of the, the Methodist Church. So we've had lots of messages coming in, and part of my job was really to try and ensure that we kept as short as possible the, 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 the messages. We also got one from, from Bill Clinton, who had worked very, very closely with John Hume in building the very successful peace process that John developed here in Northern Ireland over the last 25 or 30 years. So we had lots of messages coming in, and there would have been a huge crowd here in Derry for the funeral from all around the globe had it not been for the COVID restrictions. In fact, because of the COVID restrictions, one of John's own sons, who lives in Boston, was unable to be here. So he had to join us, like so many others, on social media and um, on television. As far as his legacy, uh, what do you see it to be? I think John's, well, John's great legacy was his personal integrity, which enabled him then to find a peace process for us. John had been in seminary for three years, training as a priest for this diocese, and then decided that wasn't his vocation. But I think it's fair to say that he really made peacemaking his vocation. He had that famous phrase, he was prepared to spread, to shed his sweat 
and never to shed somebody else's blood. So he worked exceptionally hard to bring the, the parties round the table, to help people believe peace was possible, to be not just a visionary, but also a practical architect. Um, and he began here by working on homelessness, by working on a credit union for poor families. And he was focused very much on seeking to see how can we put structures in place, not that will serve nationalism or, or imperialism or any other ism, but that will serve the welfare of the people of this community. So it was his, his generous service that, that marks his life, his deep faith, and the fact that the Good Samaritan was the gospel that was chosen for the Mass today. John, who didn't walk past a situation on the other side of the road, but went across, got his hands dirty, looked after the person and sought a solution for that problem. So John will be remembered as a wise, determined, persevering man of faith. Um, and this city is sad to see him go, but very, very proud of one of their own who never lost his sense of rootedness in this city and in this parish beside the cathedral, where he came every day when he was well for morning mass at 10 and then came back in the evening and prayed quietly himself. Well, Your Excellency, thank you so much for your time today and sharing all of that with us. Bishop Donald McYoan, Bishop of Derry, Ireland. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy.